Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you, you, Lord. You've been so, you've been so good. Lord, you've been so, so good. I don't know about y'all, but the God I serve, he's been so, oh, he's been so good. I just want to thank you, you Lord. Well, good morning, Macedonia, and to all of my Facebook and YouTube viewers who share with us every week from this Macedonia YouTube website. Uh, we, we say good morning to you and hello, whether it's morning, noon, or night. Hello. We thank God for you taking the time to share with us once again uh, as we prepare to study the Word of God uh, during this midweek study session. Listen, we hope and pray that you and your families are doing well. Uh, hope and pray that you're safe and protecting yourself uh, from this virus. Uh, hope that many of you that can and have had the opportunity or have the opportunity to receive the vaccination, uh, we petition that you do so. Uh, it's very important uh, that uh, as many that can and will please uh, get vaccinated where we can consider uh, down the road uh, herd immunity in certain areas. The desire is that we can get back to somewhat of a new normal and hopefully have the opportunity to come back to the sanctuary. That's the, that's the goal for the church is to have as many that can and will uh, to vaccinate themselves where we can consider entering back into the sanctuary. For those of you who may have tuned in to us on Sunday, that is First Lady Curry's desire. Uh, she just wants to get back in church. And uh, so we, we want to do all that we can to encourage you, those that have the opportunity, please consider uh, taking the vaccine. Uh, it's very important uh, that you consider it. It's very important that if you can and will, that you actually take it. I'm waiting. Uh, I'm hoping, praying that my time will come soon. When I get that opportunity, I do want you all to know when the opportunity does present itself. And I've made some contacts uh, and trying to get some things worked out where I can get this, get this shot as soon as possible. Whenever that time comes, Pastor Curry definitely is going to take that shot. And so we ask that you all would continue to pray for one another in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, pray that you would Continue again to social distance. Continue to take good care of yourselves. Uh, for this virus is yet still present, ever present. And then there's uh, two other strands in our country that we need to be mindful of and protect ourselves from as well. I want to thank uh, the Macedonia Church family. First of all, let me thank Nikki McLemore and... Uh, her husband Mark and to uh, their team that worked so beautifully together to prepare a anniversary celebration for First Lady and I. I want to say to Nikki and Mark and to uh, 
uh, their team. Thank you so much. Job well done. It was beautiful. We know that in this virtual space that we have, that we were unable to do uh, what we normally do during a, during a season such as this. But I want you to know that what you did was totally awesome. It was beautiful. Uh, very much so appreciated. And we were blessed. And we were humbled and honored and thankful uh, for the love that was shown to us during our third year anniversary. Uh, want to not only thank the Macedonia Church family for all that you did and all that you do, but I also want to extend my appreciation to those who are not of the membership but have a love for Sister Curry and I and have a love for the leadership here in Macedonia that you were compelled as well uh, to show your support and appreciation and your love. Thank you so much. Words cannot express how heartfelt your contribution of love to us, how heartfelt uh, it has been. Uh, just knowing that you appreciate what God is doing in this season through us just warms our heart and we are so grateful and thankful uh, for each of you. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you to be a blessing to others as you have been a blessing unto us. Thank you so much. We pray God's blessings upon you and that the Lord will continue to shine his face upon you, bring you peace and joy, and allow you to prosper in all that you do. Again, a sincere, sincere thanks to each and every one of you. We appreciate it. May God bless you. The Macedonia Church family has suffered loss over the past several weeks. Again, we lost Mother Stewart uh, who was a longtime member of this church, but had been sick and shut in for several years. But before she became sick and shut in, she was a diligent worker in the church. And the Lord called her from labor to eternal rest a few weeks past. And so I wanted to and just lift her name again today and just wanted to express you know the loss that the church family uh, feels uh, in this hour and in this time not only did we lose mother Stewart but we lost whom I think is probably our oldest male member uh, mr. Joe hunt who passed away uh, a few weeks back and again, another great loss for the Macedonia Church family. And certainly he will be missed as he is missed right now. So let us not forget those during this pandemic who has, again, been called from labor to rest, from labor to reward. They are no longer with us. Physically, they shall always be with us in spirit. Uh, let us not forget those who has who has passed and gone. Uh, it's hard to believe that Brother James Douglas is no longer with us, but it is a reality, and thus we don't want to forget those who passed and gone during this time of pandemic. And I know there are several others, but I just wanted to make mention of those on today. I want to just send a shout out to uh, Mother Long, who celebrated a birthday here uh, a few days back. Also, Brother Reverend Andrew Pruitt celebrated a birthday a few days back. Uh, happy birthday to you all. Uh, we just want you to know that we love you. We miss you. 
and we thank God that he's allowed you to see another year of your birth. Uh, big shout out to Mother McClellan, uh, whom, I've, whom I've missed. I haven't seen her face as well. I just want to say hello to you, Mother. Uh, we're doing well. I hope I look good to you. Uh, we thank God because we feel good. We thank God for each and every, every one of you. Uh, just want to thank those who contributed to our HBCU week, uh, all the neighboring churches. I just want to thank you for your participation. I want to thank Macedonia for their contribution as well. We want to continue to support our historically black colleges and universities, uh, especially locally, but uh, throughout the country. Uh, it's important that we uh, ensure that they are ever present to allow our young people to receive an education. So thank you for uh, neighboring churches and thank you Macedonia for your contributions to our HBCUs. Uh, let us be prayerful uh, as we consider uh, these numbers of COVID cases appear to be going down. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we were uh, in-house during this uh, winter storm and so many people did not go out that's going to help reduce numbers as well definitely want to pay attention to how the numbers look a few weeks down the road as people begin to go back out but um, it's looking good and so we need to consider need to be prayerful as to when will be a a time for us to consider in some way shape or form entering back into fellowship and so that thought is going through our mind it's on our heart I want you all to know that and you may be hearing something in reference to that in the weeks to come I want to prepare you all for uh, the Browns Creek District Association uh, will be having or celebrating Holy Week this year uh, as a we get information uh, out uh, I'll be sharing some of that information with you uh, but we want you to uh, be mindful of that it's going to be virtual uh, and as it is virtual we want you all to tune into it support it uh, as we celebrate Holy Week uh, the week leading up to Easter Sunday uh, Again, as I get information, I will pass that information on to you. I want to thank Brother Sam Carney as we move forward. I want to thank Brother Sam Carney for doing a superb job uh, on teaching last week. Uh, I thought he uh, dealt with the text uh, and presented some great points and encouraged us. Um, and we want to thank him for taking the time to do so. It is my prayer, uh, it's my desire that he, along with a few more uh, that I will select, will have those opportunities to share with you just as I share with you each week. Uh, in the future, you'll see more of, of that uh, as we move forward into this year. Uh, Sam is just one of a few more that we're considering uh, to have a spot uh, to teach uh, from the Holy Scriptures uh, words of encouragement and words and uh, things to consider uh, as we live this Christian life and build our lifestyles as children of God so again hats off to you Sam uh, we thank God for you um, uh, there was nothing that had happened to Pastor Curry and wasn't that I was not able to do so but again uh, the Lord has placed it in my spirit to uh, allow others to have this platform as well so you may not see me every Wednesday uh, you may see someone else uh, and then there may be some other times where there shall be some posts and others will have opportunity to encourage by way of the Word of God as well so as we go to scripture today, we left, the last time I was present, we left uh, off in 2 Thessalonians 
chapter 1. Today we'll go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That being said, if you would allow me, let us go to God in prayer. Thank him for this day and this opportunity we have to share in the word of God. Heavenly Father, the maker and creator of all things, we come before thy throne of grace in spirit, thankful for this opportunity, not only to call on your name, but we're thankful for this opportunity, O oh God, to share in the word of God. We pray, O oh God, that you would open our hearts to receive the word on today. You would speak through our, to our hearts that you would, Lord, uh, reveal to us that which you would have us to know in regards to your word and scripture today. Lord, we pray that by your spirit, not only we will be hearers of your word, but we pray, O oh God, that we shall be doers of your word as well. For our desire, O oh God, is to live a life that would please you, would glorify you. Our desire is to be a light shining in the midst of darkness. Bless us today, not only today, but every day that you give us light. Thank you for this moment in time we can share in the word of God. Lord, we pray that our coming together is not in vain, but to your glory. Therefore, we praise you now. And we give you the honor. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we give thanks. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Chapter 1. Uh, if I can just give you a, a brief recap. Paul again writes his second letter to the church there at Thessalonica. Words of encouragement, but also words of understanding. Uh, he again wanted to reaffirm the fact that if you are experiencing periods of suffering it is a clear indication that you are walking according to the ways of Christ because if we be children of God and if we be disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we know by way of the scriptures that Christ suffered we're going to be identified with Christ. If we're going to call ourselves Christians, you cannot say Christians without saying Christ. And to be a Christian is to be a follower of the teachings of Jesus Christ. To be a Christian is to be a follower of of the teachings and the life of Jesus Christ. And if Christ suffered, we as believers, my brothers and sisters, must suffer as well. Paul says, if you're suffering, believers, if you're suffering, he says it's a clear indication that you must be walking with Christ. And so those were words of encouragement that Paul wanted to refer to back to the believers there at Thessalonica and he also wanted to let them know that those whom he has sent out to back up what he's already said Tim Timotheus known to many of us uh, as Timothy Barnabas and others who are on this plight of spreading the gospel he says I back them totally and they are only backing up what I've already told you he says hear them for they have a word of encouragement for you as well although he was unable to be with them he was thankful that he was able to send Timothy and others to continue to spread the gospel he's in prison but not in prison of his mind. He still was able to spread the gospel and share it with others that others may share it with the believers there at Thessalonica and throughout Asia Minor. 
but in particularly we are we are dealing with the church there at Thessalonica and and its neighboring provinces so as we go to chapter 2 uh, Paul is now uh, giving some future hope and he's speaking on the day of the Lord the day in which Christ shall shall return let us look at chapter 2 let us begin reading and look at verses verses 1 1 through verse through verse 6 let's let's look at 1 through 1 through 5 let's look at verse 1 through 5 1 through 5 the text reads now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day Christ is at hand let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who oppresseth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he is God so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Paul, Paul refers to uh, the end of time. Uh, he says, you know, don't be too shaken in mind. Don't, don't, don't get too, you know, the, the day of the Lord is coming. But, but don't. Don't be careless in this time. Uh, don't, don't be so quick to think that it may be tomorrow. Don't, don't be too lack to think that it's way off. Paul basically says, just be ready and observe. He says, first of all, uh, Christ is not coming until we see a great falling away from the faith. Well, uh, in those times, the church was yet still early in its existence. It had basically just begun. Uh, it's only a few, few years old. A few decades old, I'll say that. But here we are, fast forward 2021. Uh, when we see this in the text now about the falling away, this great falling away it wasn't it wasn't as great in that day because again the church was really just now getting established and it had yet to be to be spread out plus the world as we know it today did not exist at that time but again fast forward to 2021 and we are and we have seen and we're seeing a, a falling away. But I believe, my brothers and sisters, that even this falling away that we see now is nothing compared to the falling away that's really expressed in the text. We're going to see it get worse than what we've seen it in our lifetime. But Paul says, don't be troubled in your spirit. He says, don't be, don't be troubled as if, if, if it was going to, if the Lord, in verse 2 he says, don't be shaken as if, he really was saying, telling them, don't be shaken as if, you know, the Lord is, is, is coming. He says, don't, don't get it that way. He says, a lot of things got to happen before that. He says, don't be deceived. 
by those who really don't know what they're talking about. These false prophets, uh, things of that nature, he says, don't be deceived by them. In verse 3, you know, he, he explains what has to happen before Christ's return. He says um, that that day is not going to come until, first of all, there's a great, great falling away. That there's a falling away. And then the next thing is that that man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. He's talking about the Antichrist. That person is going to be revealed. He's going to be revealed because uh, verse 4 says that he's going to establish his own throne. People are going to be worshiping him. He's going to have a great following. Hint, hint. He's going to be trying to make things great again. Hint, hint. <laughs> uh, that, that's, just a, that's just a joke. Uh, but uh, if you think about it, what we're seeing now uh, with this great following of our former, former president, uh, it kind of gives you an idea of what it could potentially look like. I'm not saying, I'm not judging any man, but what I am saying is you can kind of take that as somewhat of an example of how this great following will be. But the text says that before Christ returns, uh, that the Antichrist will be revealed and will be opposing We'll be opposing the teachings uh, that um, the modern day church is teaching. Uh, he will be uh, giving you that uh, sweet uh, cake and ice cream that you want to eat. And not going to be giving you that hard meat that you need to be chewing on. In other words... He's going to turn you away from the truth. He says the Antichrist must first of all be revealed before Christ returns. And there'll be a shifting from the church, falling away from the church, and a great following uh, of, the, of the Antichrist. So he says, you know, be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. Before Christ returns. He is coming back, but before he returns, these things must take place. In verse 6, let's look at verses 6 through verse 9. He says, And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the Spirit out of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Keep on reading. Look down to verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm. The man of sin, again, is called the Antichrist. In other scripture passages, you, you will, will see that. Um, we see that that preposition anti means against which indicates the man's opposition to, not a replacement of Christ. In other words, this Antichrist 
opposes Christ. He's against Christ. The characteristic of this individual is that he opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. He will be a miracle worker and even claim to be God. His coming will be after the working of Satan. But it will not be Satan. Be mindful of that. It will not be Satan. It is clear Paul thinks that Satan is not concerned with the past, but with the future. Paul does not see the world evolving gradually into a perfect state, but the fact of evil continuing right up until the end. Evil will be here until Christ returns. At that time, evil will make its greatest challenge to good. And the forces of evil will be led by a mysterious figure. This person will be empowered by Satan and is the instrument of Satan's climatic change, uh, climatic challenge, excuse me, to the things of God. Paul predicts that Christ will consume the man of sin or the Antichrist with the spirit of his mouth. And at that time, Satan and all of his conspirators will be defeated. When Christ returns to deal with Satan, a war shall begin and Satan will be defeated. When you look at verses 6 and 7, uh, Paul refers here to the Holy Spirit as the restraining force in this world, restricting the many little antichrists that exist today. So you ain't got to worry about um, the things that's going on in this world that's troubling us, how the enemy, how Satan is using all of these little antichrists uh, to turn people away from the faith. He said, you ain't got to worry about that. We have a working power that works and exists here on earth today. And that working power and that force that works against these little antichrists is the Holy Spirit. And so we, we my brothers and sisters, we're not in this alone. We've got something working for us in his own time, going to set things straight. And that is the workings of the Holy Spirit. So we don't have to worry about these little antichrists. God's going to deal with them by way of, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, in, in verse 6, the Holy Spirit is called to Kachikon or that which is withholded. This uses the neuter gender, which corresponds to the phrase pneuma, where we get the word uh, pneumonia. Pneuma, the spirit within. You know that pneumonia deals with uh, the lungs internally, same way the Holy Spirit deals with us from the inside. Uh, we got to realize, uh, looking at verse uh, number six, uh, verse seven, we have to realize uh, that God is allowing these things to happen. And by him allowing these things to happen, we need to understand that if he allows it, he's in control of it. Therefore, uh, the Antichrist will never uh, be able to do anything without specific permission from the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is in control and won't allow Satan to do or the Antichrist to do any more than, than he will. He's in control. And of course, verse 7 uh, does not refer to the departure of the Holy Spirit when you look at verse 7, but the removal of his restraining power. 
this will allow Satan and the Antichrist to have free reign on earth. Whatever happens will help to further God's plan according to his own timetable. Uh, so he's going to give him an opportunity. He's given, that, he's given this opportunity to reign. But there's going to also come a time where he's going to be even more powerful here on the earth. But when that time is done, Christ will return. Christ will deal with Satan, deal with the Antichrist at that time. And at that time, God will come in and put Satan under his feet. He's going to crush him, and we, we shall win. So, but during this time, while he reigns, you know, this great falling away. And so when we go back to, to the beginning of this chapter, when Paul talks about this falling away, this is what's going to happen in this falling away. This Antichrist is going to come up, began to perform miracles, um, again, going to speak against God, really going to claim that he is God. Uh, there's going to be a great following. Um, again, they're going to have those uh, desires to hear, uh, those sweet nothings that's going to be whispered in their ears, and they are uh, they definitely going to be at a point to where they don't want to hear the truth, they're going to have a desire to do things that are unrighteous. They're going to have a desire to hear unrighteous things. Uh, they want to hear a lie. Uh, all of those things. Uh, they don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear a lie. Uh, they don't want to hear those sweet nothings without any evidence or any proof. Uh, all of these things uh, will happen. And we're seeing small phases of that even today with these what I like to call little antichrist um, that are already set here on the earth and have great followings. He says, don't worry about them. Holy Spirit's in control, and in his own time, he's going to deal with them. But he gives these final words of instruction. Chapter 2, look at verses 13 through 17. Even though all these things are going to happen, he gives these final words of encouragement. Here he says, he says, he talks about us as believers. Verse 13, he says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Stand fast, excuse me. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation, and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work and word. He says, all these things are going to happen. They got to happen before Christ return. He says, but first of all, know who you are, know whose you are, and always give thanks to God who chose you from the beginning from the foundations of this world, he chose you unto salvation. Whether he did it by word, by his word, or whether he did it through, uh, he, by, through the epistles, he called you, he chose you, he saved you. You are a saved generation. And those who are saved should be thankful, grateful to God every day, knowing that God is in control of all of this, by his spirit, he does reign. And by his spirit, he is reigning. And by his spirit, he will reign. He says, so comfort one another. Be comfort in your own hearts, but comfort one another as well. And continue to do good works. That's all the time I have today, my brothers and sisters. I hope something was said or done to further your walk with Christ. Truly, it is about our walk with him. 
chapter uh, chapter two is very interesting. Chapter two deals with some of the things that we're seeing in the world today, only in a smaller form. It's going again. It's going to get worse before it gets better. We're going to see more of these things happen as uh, as long as we live. But Christ will return, put all these things under His feet. But even in His absence. He's left us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is still in control. And whatever's going on in the world, it'll never get beyond what the Holy Spirit uh, allows. So comfort yourselves knowing that the Holy Spirit is still the most powerful entity on this earth is the Holy Spirit. Take comfort in that and comfort one another. Till we meet again, my brothers and sisters, be careful out there. Be safe out there. Above all, be blessed. I uh, look forward to seeing you this Sunday. This is the first Sunday in March, and so we look forward uh, to each of you coming out and being on the parking lot. And uh, when you're on the parking lot again, there is a radio station, 99.1. And let me share with you, we are on an FM frequency. It's an antenna that we use inside that's able to transfer what is going on in the building out to you in the parking lot. Now, I will say to you that it only um, picks up a few hundred feet. So if you're living on the north side of town, you can't tune in to 99.1 and expect to hear us. No, it is basically for those of us who are in proximity of the church. Uh, especially and specifically meaning the parking lot. So we look forward to you coming out and sharing, sharing with us on this first Sunday as we will have communion. Uh, be prayerful for one another. Uh, look forward to seeing you again if you're able to come. And again, uh, practice social distancing. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. And avoid putting your hands on your face if at all possible. Until we meet again, may God bless you and may heaven smile on you. It will always be our prayer.